the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have come to the conclusion that the temple that we are talking about, that God gave to Moses as a sample of us, was first of all made in the heavenly realm. Revelation 11 verse 19, we have confirmed it, that in the heavens, the doors of the temple were opened. And John said, I saw the ark of God, the representation of God in that temple. You brought it, you brought it to this earth. The same thing, the temple was erected and the ark of God was inside the holiest of holiest, living among the people of Israel. It means that all the communications God gave to Moses concerning the priests, I told you last Sunday, must be replicated by the New Testament priest. It's a heavenly instruction which must be made to the New Testament priest who does not need to go to the physical temple as it was those days and offer sacrifices for they themselves are offering the sacrifices upon their hearts. So the direction of God gave unto Apostle Paul to bring into our attention that even though we are a temple of God, somebody else is ruling over us. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 6 made us aware that Christ has a son over his own house whose house we are. So the New Testament believer it's a temple of God, it's a house of God. But now we are made to realize that there is a supervisor over the house. There's a ruler over the house. So you are a temple, I'm a temple. You are a temple, I'm a temple. But there is a ruler over this temple. There is a supervisor over this temple. When a person tells you that in my work there is a supervisor, that means the supervisor has the control to mark your requests, to mark your work. There's a rulership over the house. So every New Testament believer who is a priest does not own him or herself. You need approval for your supervisor before you can act. It's the principle of God. For Christ is a son over his own house, whose house we are. He superimposes, he overshadows. So you cannot tell me that you are a New Testament Christian, a believer, a priest, and you act by your own self then you are not the true temple of God. Because the true temple of God in the New Testament must have a supervisor, must have a ruler who approves all your works. It's very important for us to know this for if you were working on the government circles or whatever it is and you have a supervisor, whether you go on leave, you go on sick leave, whether you want I owe you, whether you want salary or judgment, whatever that the supervisor must sign, whatever you have said it. It means that all of us sitting here, we cannot, by our own volition and by our own mind, detect our actions. It must be given to Christ for approval. Every born again believer, we must be given to Christ and approval. Apostle Paul said it in a different form in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. He related that in a great house there are vessels of gold, vessels of silver, vessels of wood, and so forth. But if a man will purge himself, he will be meet for the master's use. That's the second version, the 21st, 20, 20, 21. In other words, the great house is for the master. 
And if the master come and see the vessel of wood, vessel of silver, vessel of gold, vessel of this, and then he takes the vessel, he looks around the vessel and see whether it is dirty or not. Then the supervising role for if the vessel he chooses and you look upon it and it is not dirty and it is clean, then he can use it. So that is the master supervisory role over the house. So one more time, sisters and brothers, we can live our life by tantrums, by anger, by behavior that is anti-God without getting approval from God. It means that the house of God, you, brother who is a priest, must live in patience and get approval from your supervisor before you act. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is a supervisor in us. We cannot live our life as priests or as a temple and wake up in the morning and behave the way we want to behave. It is not true. The rancor, the anger, the slapping and the fighting within our houses and within our members and within friends and the rest, it's not, it's uncalled for. If a man will have patience and ask the supervisor and let the supervisor approve our character before we emanate them, Peace shall reign within our houses. Peace shall reign within our, our churches. Peace shall reign within the place we work. Because we are living our life by the approval of the house owner. The scripture tells us, Master, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who is over his house, whose house are we? So we are not permitted to behave anyhow. I've said this several times and scripture tells us that we are the property of God. It is the owner of the property who can decide what the property must be used for. But we neglect it. We have so much anger, flighty anger, quick temper, quick words. We behave in such a way that we, our supervisor does not give us approval. So our lives are falling apart. Our marriages are falling apart. Our businesses are falling apart because we don't seek his approval before we act. But normally, according to Apostle Paul, the master of the house must see that the vessel is clean first. He must inspect the vessel. He must make sure there's no debt on the vessel. That is a supervisory role. But we don't allow him to do it. Even though he owns the house, we don't allow him to do it. Christians all over, we are filled with pride. We are filled with anger. We are filled with short-temperedness. We are filled with destruction one another until God's spirit as a ruler of the house is timid. It doesn't work. But he's the ruler of the house. The master must approve us as vessels. So we have no excuse. The only way we can get approval and have a character of approval before we act is when the believer has patience in events of life so that they can get God to speak to them and direct them and go through God's will and choose that which is God. So patience has become a serious thing among Christians today. We want things too quick. We want to answer our husbands too quick. We want to answer our wives too quick. We want to behave too quick. And by the time we are doing try and error, we don't see God leading us. But he's still the supervisor. In a normal sense, if you're a businessman or you are working somewhere and you always flout the rules of the supervisor, you risk being sacked. So when you consistently behave in such a way that the ruler of the house is not happy with you, he would leave you. You will be on your own. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is a house, there is a master over the house in whose house we are. We must think about this and change our characters, our behavior. That's why we sang the song, I surrender. 
let me feel the sacred flame glory glory to God I've now changed because I listen to the supervisor before I act I don't behave anyhow for when the supervisor is the one leading you sister by all means success will come on your way amen if the ruler speaks do you hear but remember we are lively stones building the house our house is a lively stone we human beings and there is a ruler there's a supervisor do we hear our actions in life the things we want to decide the things we want to do if the ruler speak do we hear because it is paramount to our success in life for if the ruler which is God who is God's word is the one leading you then he will never leave you to a point where you will fall down and fail he will not in whatever difficult situation he will lead you to go through Christ Jesus will have an answer for your success so when we want to be successful in life spiritual and physical then we material then we have to come to a point where we must let our year listen to the supervisor of our lives. Amen. We must let it. If you don't know how to hear from God, we must go through scriptures and you must find out this action I'm taking to my wife, this action I'm taking to my husband, this behavior I'm emanating, is it approved by the supervisor? For the supervisor will not let disgrace come to you. In difficult situation of your life, he will come as a support in your life. Amen. For he is the one leading you. He is the one speaking to you. He is the one orchestrating your activities in life. But when we prevent him, we will fail. We will fail. For the master must look at the vessel and approve for every good work. He must approve the vessel for every good work. He must make it clean, approve it for every good work, not bad works, every good work. So by all means, so long as I'm a vessel within the great house and I have a supervisor and his plan is that he's going to do good work with me, then every day I shall be successful so long as he approves my actions. So we realize now that when Israel was extremely humble and the supervisor was leading them, it was excellent for them. The believer must have one way, one God, one heart, leading the believer in this modern world. Even though the world will call you kulu and useless, if you stand by God, it shall be well with you. Israel did it. In Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 12, we see God commending Israel. He said, so the Lord alone did lead him, Israel, and there was no strange God with him. That's the, one of the greatest days of Israel. God alone. Nothing else. Nobody else. The supervisor was the one approving the actions of Israel. Nothing. There was no other formula, no other mandate, no other God. God and God alone. Jehovah God alone. And God said, so the Lord alone was leading him, Israel. And God confirmed that in their hearts and in their minds and in their rooms, there was no other God. I alone, I am the supervisor, I am the owner of the property, I am the owner of the land, and I am the one leading you. And if I am the one leading you, then Israel, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. If I, God, I'm the one leading you, you can't go wrong. Despite all your enemies, ye shall be successful. Amen. Every time God leads his children, they are victorious. They will have problems. So in verse 13, when the Lord saw that Israel, I, God, am the one leading you alone, there is no other way, according to scripture, because he was leading them, he made them ride in high places. People fear them. Countries fear them. Before they enter into a, a land, another land, the, 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 the prime minister there has come. I beg you, we beg you, don't come and destroy us. 
they ride in high places with, with respect on the earth that they might be increased. They will eat the increase of their fields. When he was, God was leading them. He made them ride on high places and then he made him uh, he made him to suck honey out of a rock. That's a difficult time. When they are changing prices every day at Malata Market, hard times, and your salary is the same. God gave them grace to live a glorious life. They broke honey from the rock. Today, everybody is crying. Everybody, if God will lead you and you allow God to lead you, it shall be well with your life. Amen. So he made them have rock and honey out of rock and oil out of a flint rock. Difficult time, it shall be well. Christians don't want God's leadership. They want to lead them own self because they are educated, because they have gone to school, because they have gone to some course, because they want this. But God is greater than your education. God is greater than your status. God is greater than everything you have. If God alone shall lead you, it shall be well with you. He made oil come from a flint rock. He Amen. made honey come from a rock. Difficult time when everybody is crying, your house is full of sumptuous goods. And people are surprised. Hey, how did you get it? It is God who is leading me. He knows the corners and the secrets of this world. So Christians must allow God to lead them. For he has done it before for the physical Israel. And he will do it for the spiritual Israelites. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We must think, oh. We must think. too much. But God has given us the way out honey out of rock difficult time you have goodness in your life amen praise the lord so we come to a point sisters and brothers i want to I will close we come to a point where we realize that there are certain behaviors that the ruler of the house must not find in us the great man remember he picks the vessel and clean and make sure that whether it is clean or not so there are behaviors that is outside there that the moment we become priests in the temple of god remembering that we have a household that we have we have a ruler in our house that behavior must not find us we we'll read it and we we'll go home we come back next sunday to continue but that behavior must not be there if not we will cannot get oil in the flint rock we cannot get honey in the rock. We will fail. If there is hardship, we will face it hardly. So we must watch that that character will not be found in us so long as we are the priests in the household of God. So in Psalm 5, when we look at Psalm 5 verse 8, for there is no faithfulness in their mouth. The relation between husband and wife, sister, brother, pastor, congregation, director, workers, all communications and all things that is interacting with man as a priest in the household of God, we must be faithful and truthful to ourselves, to our families, to our churches, to, 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 to our husbands and wives, to our families. There must not be a time where there is unfaithfulness. And inside us, there must be no wickedness. People pretend a lot in the church. Our white teeth is smiling in front of brother, sister, but in what us is bad life. So the pretension must cease. The hypocrisy must cease. It must not be found in the house of God. It must not be found in a great man's house. Their truth is an open sepulchre. An open sepulchre is a grave, rotten, rotten dead bodies, thinking. And yet in the church, they sing the best. 
They love the best. Praise God, sister. Praise God. Oh, sister, hallelujah. But inside them is dead men bones. That's what scripture is saying. For their truth is an open sepulchre. They flatter with their tongue. They are, it's not true. They flatter with their tongue. They want 20 cities from you. So they will tell you everything you need. The moment you give them 20 cities, they tell in their heart, from me so come. This type of character, this shady character, according to scripture, it must not be with us. Inside them, dead men bones. Bad life, unfaithfulness. Oh, brother, you are a tailor. What oh, sister, you are a seamstress. This is my cloth. Oh, uh, so how much are you going to take me? Oh, twenty cities. Bring it. I will do it for you. No, within tomorrow morning you can come and get it. If you give it to me, give me twenty cities today. Tomorrow morning you can come and get it. Get it. It has become one year. Tomorrow morning you can come and get it. Now one year. Every day lies, every day lies, every day lies among your own selves. God will not approve your life. So you go through serious troubles in your life. You can make a headway. You hit the wall, you come back. You hit the wall, you come back. Because this type of character does not be in the great man's house. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are our own condemnation. We are our own condemnation. So when you read Psalm 5 verse 8, make sure it doesn't appear in your life. Amen. For you cannot reap the oil in the flint rock. Amen. We'll come back next Sunday. Amen. Shall we bow our heads? Thank you, everlasting Father. We are moving forward in this assembly. May what we have here heard become a practical example in our lives so that Heavenly Father, we can reap oil from flinty rocks and we shall suck honey from rocks. Thou art God, so long as you lead us and we obey you, it shall be well with us. May it be well with your congregation. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. God bless you.